I'm Brother Bernie, a Divine Word missionary who's been working in Jamaica for over 20 years. Now, the Society of the Divine Word has been in the Caribbean for a long, long time. Bishop Bowers, who was the bishop in Accra, Ghana, who came from the Caribbean, was named a bishop of the new diocese called St. John Bastier. That's in the Eastern Caribbean. But 25, or actually it'll be 26 years ago this year, Father Ed Herberger was the first Divine Word missionary to come to Jamaica. And he was granted, he was offered the civil parish of St. Thomas. Now St. Thomas is famous for being rural and very poor. One of the things about St. Thomas is Morant Bay, the capital. In the Jamaican history, there was the famous rebellion led by Paul Bogle, who's a national hero, to get land rights for people. Paul Bogle and 200 people were hanged. The British were brutal. And what they did is they, like, punished. No schools were opened. They just wanted people to be able to mark an X that they got paid for cutting their sugar cane. Now, Father, uh, Father Ed Herberger came in with funding from Divine Word Missionaries. And we began a heavy program of helping young people going to school to be teachers. And I'm happy to say that in the United States and throughout Kingston, many of these people are teaching, teaching in Catholic schools. Now, this is important because in Jamaica, the po Catholic population is a little bit more than 1%, but we have a number of famous Catholic schools and our ad, uh, graduates from St. Thomas Civil Parish are, are teaching in those schools. Uh, one of the things that our Holy Spirit sisters have done is they came in uh, uh, 2012 and started Our Lady of the Assumption School in Morant Bay. And that is thriving. I cannot say enough of the dedication of those women. But let's go back with Divine Word missionaries. A lot of our work is with the people who are not fully educated, fully uh, Christian, fully developed in their Catholic faith. So Father Herberger was pastor of three churches in St. Thomas, the civil parish. And other Divine Word missionaries have joined him and worked with them. Now in 1999, in August, I came to Jamaica with the express uh, request to do social development. Father Bernard Latus, who was the pastor at the time, asked our provincial if he could get someone to help work with building houses. And for 12 years, I spent my life working with food for the poor and building houses. I cannot say enough that this would not have been possible without the work of Jamaicans, working with the people of Jamaica. And the one man who is very, very significant to me is Max Smith. Uh, together, we helped build over 2,000 houses. Now, you need to understand, this is not like a house in America, but it's a solid floor, strong wood, and a rooftop, giving security to people who lived in shacks. I know of people who lived in abandoned cars. I know of people who lived in chicken coops. I know of people who were catching, as they say in Jamaica, going from house to house because there was no place to live because maybe their boyfriend threw them out or whatever. 
and the children uh, were misbehaving. And what we have done is by giving a house, and I mean literally giving a house, they were able to start a new life. Um, the great joy for me is to hand the key over to a person and say, this is your house. Now you make it a home, a home of shelter, a home where your children can excel. A lot of times that has happened. A lot of times that has happened. Not always, I'll be honest, but one of the things I always like to do is when we're building the house that the person help with the construction. The very first house we built was for Mary Little. And she was uh, in her 80s, she had no children, but she was living in a shack. Anyway, when we were mixing the cement, I would say, Mary, you got to help us, you got to sing a song. And in Jamaica, the people love singing. And so while we're mixing the cement, she was singing choruses and we did too. I love telling that story because even though she was old and infirm, she helped in the building of the house. Now, younger men, of course, they can mix cement. They can carry the cement. So a lot of it is that they become invested in the house. In 2012, I was assigned to Holy Rosary Church, which is in an inner city. And I'll be honest, it's rough. There's a high crime rate. But what I did is like we're doing here. I walked around the neighborhood. I spent months going from street to street. And everybody, most people know Brother Bernie. One reason is I'm the only white person here. But because I went out and reached out. And what we're doing here is trying to make a peaceful existence. I did a lot of work with the police in an area called Bower Bank, which had a high crime rate. And what we did is we were working with the people, we helped them paint their walls, uh, make plants, to make it look more a human environment instead of just uh, corrugated steels, zinc uh, walls. And again, the that you take a little pride into your family, into your home. A number of these children go to Holy Rosary School. I'm very proud of the work we are doing there. Now, Holy Rosary School has 600 students. Holy Rosary School has a Catholic principal. Holy Rosary School has five to ten Catholic students. So, there's not much of a Catholic influence, but myself and some of the other ladies, we have a Catholic school ministry. And what, they, what we do is we pray with the children every day, we try to be present with them, we try to give an encouraging word, we try to bring a Catholic ethos. For example, Holy Rosary. Our Lady of the Rosary's feast day is October 7th. We had the children praying the rosary, even if they're not Catholic. So what? Just to give them a Catholic influence, a Catholic experience. Another thing we have done <clears throat> is we do the Stations of the Cross. I did not know that that was only a Catholic, only Catholics did that. I thought all different Christian denominations. And what I'm happy to say is that this past uh, Lent, the teachers and some of the students did the Stations of the Cross, but they did it in Patois, the language of the Jamaicans. For me, that's a good example of what we Divine Word missionaries do. I don't bring an American church. Father Bernard Lattes does not bring a Polish church. Father Fidelis does not bring an Indonesian church. 
Father Frank Power does not bring an Irish church, but with the people, we create a Jamaican church. And for me, that's a very, very good example. Now, our liturgies are festive and singing and clapping. It's nothing to go over two hours. I come from a German Catholic background, and I'll be honest, if you have mass over an hour, people are upset. Uh, some of my family, some of my friends who have visited, they will sit there and being in church and say, wow, I can't believe it went, that was two hours. But the joy, the excitement of, of celebrating, and it's done in a Jamaican way. It would not be good to have people praying like, I, like my family does in a German-American setting. We do so in a Jamaican setting, a Jamaican way. And that's been very, very exciting for me, but also very prayerful for me. Because no one person knows how to pray. No one person knows how to celebrate liturgy. But together, together, we can celebrate. Another aspect we do is the biblical apostolate, Bible sharing. And as I say, after we do the reading, we have a little reflection, and then people share how that gospel affects their lives today. Uh, Monday, we had the, the reading of Mary and Martha. And for me, as I sat with the group, I said, the importance of being an attentive listener like Martha, okay? That she was not doing all the work. And that's something I'm learning to do, that I don't have to do all the work. Let the people do it. Let the people take in involvement. Let the people take ownership. And you know what? That's the best way. That's the best way because sometime I'm going to be leaving, but hopefully what work we have started here will continue on. I know when I left St. Thomas, the civil parish, there were four Bible groups there, and they're still going on. For me, that's a success story. These children, not all of them get a chance to go to church. Not all of them have a... Uh, chance to, to work with other people, but what we have done with them is have them come together, form community, get an identity, and then we share the scriptures with them. And the fact that they continue, for me, is a testimony of what we Divine Word missionaries are all about. We come so that the Divine Word is alive and well in Jamaica. We come so that the divine word becomes in flesh. We come so that other people can put their faith into action. I'm happy to say that we've had many groups come and all of them talk about with joy the excitement of putting my faith into action, be it building a house, going to a Bible group, or like at Holy Rosary, joining the Catholic school ministry people, and when the students are leaving the church, to give them an encouraging word. Some of our children, some, live in object poverty, just terrible conditions. No human being should be like that. And a lot of these mothers are under a lot of pressure, and I'm sorry to say they take it out on their children. Not all, but if we can make that child feel at home. If we can make that child see that they have dignity, that they are good people, then, then we have a better chance of educating that child. And I'm happy to say, not, not all of the graduates, like this year we had 80, 88 students graduate from sixth grade. Not, not all of them were, were, were success stories but a number of them are. 
And I know, for example, Holy Rosary, the coat of arms is a torch. And I always tell the children, let your light shine. Don't put it under a bushel basket. And, the, the, and, and no matter where you go, no matter what you do in your life, you're a Holy Rosary student. You're a Holy Rosary student. And you make that light shine. Then I know the prayer of Arnold Jansen is a reality. That the light, that the, the oh my goodness, the, uh, the prayer of Father Arnold Jansen. Um, May the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief vanish before the light of the word and the spirit of grace. And I pray that the heart of Jesus will live in the hearts of all, especially here in Jamaica. Thank you.